Kevin Knutz is at the uh, Department of Physics, University of Albany, and we're going to continue the theme of, of uh, artifacts or other technosignatures in the near-Earth space environment. All right, thank you very much. I'm doing this work in uh, collaboration with Philippe Alaris um, from the Netherlands. And um, I'm very interested in the, the idea of CETA and even more interested in trying to catch something that's currently lurking in the near-Earth environment. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So here, appropriately, the, um, this is some of the motivation here. And as um, Jim just described, and here's a, a, a picture of one of his articles. Um, <clears throat> so we are interested in looking for um, probes or craft operating near the Earth environment currently. Um, this is, we may be emboldened to do this, especially since um, in the last few years, we've detected two interstellar objects um, passing through our solar system. And um, why look here on Earth? Um, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be finding probes that were sent here long ago, um, like we would on the moon, um, that are left over. And, um, but, but life looks for life. Earth is an interesting destination. And so you can imagine that um, extraterrestrials could very well send probes here, just as we're sending probes to Mars and to um, working on sending probes to Alpha Centauri. Um, so in addition to searching for massive technosignatures visible at astronomical distances, it's reasonable to watch for technosignatures in the near-Earth environment where detection would be immediately relevant um, and actionable. Uh, detecting anything currently operating here would be, um, would be very relevant to us and it would enable us to, um, to interact with it perhaps, um, collect additional data, focus additional resources on that. So what might such technosignatures look like? These are potential examples. If you have not had your head in the sand in the last uh, few years, you've probably seen the news that the Pentagon has confirmed that it has been studying UFOs for many years and that these have been a problem, especially with the US Navy. Um, and one can wonder what can we make of such news? It's difficult because we, aren't, we don't really get usable data from the US Navy. Most of these encounters are classified. They've released a few videos, um, but this isn't really scientific data. So what do you make of such things? Well, there was an interview just three days ago um, with, on CNN with Christopher Mellon, who's the former United States Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and for Security and Information Operations. And he, when questioned about this, stated that all assertions must be taken seriously. So from here on, I'm just going to take this seriously and um, hope that they um, do make good on their, their efforts to release some of these, these findings and perhaps we as scientists can learn more ourselves. So UAPs and UFOs are potential technosignature candidates that really cannot be ignored. Um, Wise advice states that we must be agnostic about the issue. And I agree with, with um, Ravi and Jacob on this in their um, editorial that was just published uh, last week, I believe in Scientific American. But what does it mean for a scientist to be agnostic about um, something like this? If we remember back, you know, Edwin Hubble made the important um, statement that observations always involve theory. We can't just look at data without a hypothesis. You have to put it in the context of a hypothesis. And the extraterrestrial hypothesis is simply one of many hypotheses, all of which must be on the table and carefully considered. Since we do know that there are multiple phenomena at play here, um, there are misidentifications, there are hoaxes, there are potential artifacts, there, are, there could be equipment malfunctions, um, there could be the unknown atmospheric phenomena that haven't been studied or discovered. And then there is what we call the Wakanda hypothesis, 
um, which refers to the fact that there could be a group of people or a country that has leapfrogged everybody else in technology and um, could be responsible for some of these objects. So there's in many cases, there's not a single um, phenomena at play. Um, we are, as city folks, we are interested in one hypothesis, um, the extraterrestrial hypothesis. So we would be only interested in a subset of these um, objects or phenomena that might fit an extraterrestrial hypothesis. So how can we do this? How can we accomplish this? Well, um, Earth observation via satellite is, is now an effective way to um, monitor um, near Earth space. Um, NASA, um, the Japanese Space Agency, and the Europeans have worked together to form the COVID-19 Earth Observation Dashboard, and um, they have used satellites to monitor the effects of the pandemic on both the environment and human activities, and this has been very effective. Um, in addition, there are a number of, of private satellite companies operating worldwide that could provide useful data as well. <clears throat> so the challenge here and objective is to monitor and search Earth's vicinity for anomalies and unknown phenomena and uh, possible techno signatures. And what, would, what kinds of techno signatures could we look for? We could look for techno signatures of aerial craft or probes. Um, some of these might be related to appearance, peculiar shapes, um, peculiar behaviors, um, very large sizes, um, non-aerodynamic structures yet flying, um, unusual movements. Some of these may include sudden and sharp angle turns, um, trajectories not matching those of satellites or rockets on, in orbit. Um, multimedia travel, craft that are, that are moving from space to air to water are, are, are possibilities we could look for. We could also look for unusual electromagnetic emissions. And, um, and then of course, craft with um, atypical velocities and accelerations, um, very unreasonable accelerations or velocities similar to those of spacecraft while in the atmosphere would all be, all be interesting techno signatures. Um, I note these especially because we have done some work um, that is published on the uh, flight characteristics of some UAPs and these accelerations are really extreme and the velocities are on the order of, of some of our best spacecraft. So satellite imagery can be used to confirm or deny encounters reported by both authorities and, or civilians. <clears throat> Here's an example of this. So here to illustrate feasibility is the satellite image of a 12 foot disc parked on a front lawn with two occupants. How do I know the ground truth? I'm having a little fun here because these are Halloween decorations that me and my children made um, to put up a few years ago in front of our house. But I do know that that is a 12 foot disc and easily seen from space. This image was obtained from L3 Harris. So we would have the capability to observe um, unusual craft from orbit. Um, satellite imagery such as the Sentinel-2 mission in, in, um, from the ESA um, has archived images so we can actually go back in time and when we do receive information about uh, sightings or encounters, we can go back in time and verify them that would be interesting. There's a wide obs areas of observation. Um, the spatial re resolution here is about 10 meters. So um, there's some benefits to this. Here's an example of an application using Sentinel-2 and imagery and multispectral instruments. You can easily see airplanes flying, which you can see in these two photographs here. And in fact, from this data, you can extract information about the aircraft. So in this case here, the aircraft has an estimated altitude of about 11,000 meters. It has a 60 meter wingspan and is moving about 800 kilometers per hour. So you can extract information about the um, size, velocity, and altitudes of aircraft. Um, you may be able to use machine learning to classify these aircraft or um, detect outliers. 
Um, this approach to monitor has been applied in other areas of astrophysics and um, could be used to monitor Earth as well. In combining this with artificial intelligence and machine learning would, would offer um, an increased advantage um, in being able to monitor um, places that are hard to um, detect, such as over Earth's oceans. So in conclusion, um, the search for techno signatures should really include extraterrestrial um, craft or robotic probes that may be currently operating in Earth's atmosphere or Earth's environment. Um, especially because such an event would be extremely um, important to detect and then would provide some advantages for further study. The um, use of artificial intelligence provides in interesting and exciting research opportunities. Um, this is, um, Jim mentioned the work done by Daniel Angerhousing to look for artifacts on the moon. Similar um, efforts could be done to look for strange craft operating in Earth's space. And um, recent concerns about UAPs could be potentially addressed. You could easily validate or invalidate sightings or encounters. Um, you could be perhaps perform identification, classification, and maybe make discovery. So thank you very much for your attention.